Okay, so for for this session, I what I'll be covering is uh, document understanding and and how it can help every each and every organization, big or small, in their uh, in streamlining their document processing um, use cases. So, um, which is a very very active area in when it comes to automation. So that's what we're going to focus for today. And in fact, this will be a, 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 a two-day uh, session. Uh, the, the other one will be uh, uh, hosted in, in our community event. So uh, that's, sorry for the shameless plug, but yeah, that's, uh, this will be a, a more of an overview of the document understanding uh, as well as um, a demo of an end-to-end -end use case. Um, and yep, uh, let me kick off uh, by starting to uh, present this. Uh, so here, um, uh, before I, I go to the to the to the main topic, which is document understanding, let me show you um, uh, uh, UiPath um, uh, end-to-end platform. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm part of UiPath um, uh, pre-sales in in Southeast Asia, and currently based in the Philippines. Um, so um, the end-to-end -end platform of UiPath, here you can easily see that UiPath gets recovered from discovery uh, to, to, to building and managing and running automation as well as engaging humans and, of course, measuring the and governing the automation programs and outcomes from your automation so that you can easily scale. Right. And I'm not here, uh, even though I'm, I'm with UiPath, I'm not here solely to talk about the product, right, uh, our, our product. Uh, but most importantly, to address the challenges it's trying to solve and how it, it, it solves it, okay? And one of the challenges or the most um, active area in, in automation, uh, I mean, active um, area in automation, as I mentioned, is document processing, but more on that later. And just to show you the, uh, each of the stages of the end, UiPath and end platform, you have discovery where you, know, you have the tools, uh, to help you automate uh, uh, the discovering the new opportunities using process mining and task mining for build. You have um, uh, different variants of studio or, or development automation IDE that is catered for professional developers, citizen developers, and uh, even employees to empower and creating and uh, automation for, for their productivity. Of course, manage in, for, for you to be able to securely deploy and manage automations uh, from anywhere at scale. Also, for run, robots can uh, attended or unattended can work with your applications and your people to carry out those automations so that it can uh, benefit them and, and uh, so for them not to do those mundane and repetitive tasks, right? which is the core um, uh, vision of RPA. And of course, engage so that people and robots can work together to automate complete uh, processes. And lastly, measuring and governing um, tools that can help you measure both operational and uh, uh, business results to help you run uh, effective program and maximize your returns on automation. Okay, and as I mentioned, uh, one or if not the most exciting offering within UiPath, which is part of the build stage, uh, and uh, and the more advanced capabilities giving ro your robots the skills to interpret documents. Uh, for processing in your workflow. And uh, this is only one of the many advanced human-like skills that you can incorporate um, uh, with your robot, right? So uh, other skills like text justification, image justification, uh, uh, tabular data regression, forecasting. Uh, this is part of our, our AI Center offering. And one of those is, of course, document understanding, making sense out of the documents and, uh, and getting the data trapped within those documents, okay? So this is what we're going to focus on for this session, um, document understanding, giving the power um, to your robots to, to understand documents and be able to automate and to end process involving documents. So specifically, we'll be going through the challenges in document processing and what is the document understanding framework uh, of UiPath, and of course, what's new, what's coming. And lastly, we'll be, uh, I'll be showing some demo or, or use end-to-end -end use cases. And let me start with uh, this uh, topic of, um, or a fact that you see here. 
um, which is document processing is at the core of automation. Because if there's one universal challenge that every industry deals with, it's really the buildup of paperwork, right? And a lot of value comes from RPA, but that comes from, from automation or RPA is freeing up the data trapped within those documents. Because there's no, there's, there's no company in the world that does not deal with uh, deal or process documents right? across industries, across functions, from as simple as um, AP, uh, accounts payable or accounts receivable, receivable invoice processing, to uh, sales orders, to shipment tracking. So these use cases involves repetitive document processing steps. Right? Um, according to Forbes, as much as 2.5 quintillion bytes of data are created every day. And that's a lot of data in need of processing, right? Um, uh, documents like HR forms, contracts. So businesses across the world spend uh, countless hours reading these documents, uh, getting information from them, and making sure the correct action. This is important. Making sure the correct action is taken based on those extracted information. So it's a, a routinary task uh, that forces employees to focus on those manual time-consuming, okay? And uh, not to mention that um, the information that's kept within these documents are very, very important. Uh, like what I've mentioned, right? Each of these documents uh, hold critical and detailed information which impacts their um, efficiency and profitability. These are those most common use cases across various functions in industry. So it's, uh, again, document processing is agnostic, um, function agnostic and industry agnostic. So take, for example, uh, in, gen, uh, in, in as generic use case, you have uh, invoice processing, receipt processing in financial services, accounts payable. So take, for example, one of our actual use case from, from one of our customers. So they've automated their logistics management and invoice handling process, uh, which we all know are, are, are the most common entry, entry point for entry process in RPA. As a leading uh, uh, company in the chemicals industry, they depend on, on accurate data and uh, manual invoice processing and, and shipping uh, documentation was also quite prone to errors. So that's another uh, challenge. So accuracy, right? So vendor invoices to accounts payable could be in uh, images or PDF or depending on the vendor, they are handwritten or uh, with several different formats. So what employees had to do is they had to extract, double check relevant data and it was very labor intensive and, and uh, expensive um, um, task, right? Um, so with the Automation that they built using UiPath, um, uh, RPA, and uh, powered by document understanding, employees don't have to enter invoice information uh, manually now because UiPath robots can automatically extract, right, input relevant uh, fields, right, uh, unless there are specific points to to uh, to to involve the human, right, to complete the more complex invoices, right. So what happened is um, uh, more than 2,500 invoices per month was entirely done with UiPath robots and 40,000 printouts of, um, per quarter was saved when that particular process is automated. Right? Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? And uh, this is how powerful um, having this kind of capability with your, with your automation or RPA or robots uh, can mean, right? So, with that said, what really is uh, document understanding? So, document understanding, the common misconception is regarding um, OCR, right? They may say, why don't we just use OCR? Uh, is it just a, a more or prettier term for OCR? And the short answer to that is no, not uh, definitely no, right? OCR is not the U. Right, OCR is just the preliminary part of document standing. OCR is just the conversion of an image to a text to make it machine readable and be processed in the DU framework. Right, uh, you will see later that OCR will come in handy in digital step of the process when dealing with non-native documents. When I say non-native, these are scanned images or image files or or other um, 
um, uh, file types that are, are not uh, digitized, right? So document understanding is the term used to describe uh, not only reading, but also interpreting and also acting on the document uh, automatically. So what's important is all of this is performed by software robots. So intelligent document processing technologies uh, incorporating machine learning capabilities um, allow robots uh, AI to understand the documents, right? This way we can say that the document understanding emerges at the intersection of uh, uh, document processing, um, AI and RPA. And UiPath document understanding combines RPA and AI to help you extract and interpret data from different documents and ensure end-to-end -end processing, right? The tool works with a wide range of documents, be it structured, semi-structured, unstructured. So uh, just have to employ different approaches, which is part of the framework, right? And it recognizes different objects like tables, handwriting, signatures, or checkboxes. And um, you can feed it with different file formats. And this is easily available directly from, from our, our build uh, component, which is Studio, um, and provides drag and drop uh, elements designed for, uh, for you to build your document understanding workflow. It leverages combination of approaches like um, um, template-based extraction, machine learning model extraction for semi-structured document so that you can ensure most rapid and accurate results even if the, the, even if the documents are scanned um, uh, or skewed or scanned at an angle um, so it can uh, be able to adapt and, and de-skew maybe or, or rotate uh, so it will uh, be automatically uh, processed, okay? So that's document understanding um, in a nutshell. And one of the biggest differentiator to, to, uh, of, um, uh, of UiPath document understanding to, to a company focused solely on document understanding are, is, of course, the RPA capabilities and platform integrations that um, not only UiPath, but um, also um, other RPA providers has, right? Because document understanding on its own is very rarely an end-to-end -end process, right? But instead, it's a key piece of collecting the necessary information within a larger workflow um, from ingestion to uh, from various data sources up to their current uh, corresponding downstream uh, process where this extracted data will be ultimately uh, properly utilized. So it... Uh, this is uh, what I mentioned uh, regarding uh, document understanding. It's just uh, one of the critical piece, but the, the other pre and post processing will definitely be handled by, by RPA. Um, so we can look beyond data extraction, make sure we automate the entire process all while being technology agnostic. So you can see, you will see later that you can um, use on the digitized step, you can use a wide array of OCRs available, Microsoft, Google, uh, and leverage those. And you can just uh, plug and play those OCRs. Uh, instruction step, uh, plug and play the extractors, classification, plug and play different ones, even uh, integrations with ABI is available. So it's uh, flexible um, and uh, completely in-house. So uh, can offer um, solutions uh, for many document types, right? No stick of document type, you can uh, approach it with, with a different uh, uh, suitable extractor. Because uh, another big challenge in document understanding is coming up with suitable approaches that can cater to wide variety of these document types. Depending on their structure and format, documents can be categorized into three types. So I've mentioned some documents such as tax forms, government forms, IRS, uh, maybe uh, BIR, 2316. So those stay in fixed format. So these are called structured documents like this one. Other documents such as those that have different qualities so um, or varying layouts or designs but include similar types of information are called 
semi-structured documents. Uh, this uh, includes receipts, invoices, or bill of lading, purchase orders. So these are common examples of documents in this category. And finally, uh, documents such as contracts, agreements, insurance, or premiums, policy declarations, which don't have standard structure. These are referred to as unstructured documents. So that's why what we need is a framework that's flexible enough to handle these different uh, kinds of business scenarios and at the same time handle the aggregation and downstream processing. And that's exactly uh, why we have what we call document understanding framework, which is uh, our next topic. Okay, so we, we, we we're now familiar with basics of document standing. And now what uh, is this that we call document understanding framework? Yeah, so uh, again, uh, document understanding framework supports this series of steps and all of these steps are, are you know, natural. Uh, document understanding framework, I'll, I'll be in, uh, uh, describing in, in a few um, steps, right? On how this helps you um, streamline uh, creating your DE workflow. And because uh, document understanding framework is based, these steps that you see here, these are, are based uh, or are, are kind Kind of natural when it comes to uh, parsing or processing documents and with, with each of these steps you have components that you can use within UiPath uh, to support each of the steps in the framework and the first step is to load the taxonomy uh, which is obviously the first step with in where you uh, uh, def uh, set up the scene where you define the documents that document types that you are uh, expecting within your workflow along with the field associated so this is just um, creating the those metadata, right? Uh, after uh, creating or loading the taxonomy, the next step is of course converting. I can help Russell with uh, this presentation while he's trying to uh, yeah. sort out his audio. So yeah, the next step for this is to digitize, right? It's all about um, converting the image into machine readable text, as you can see here. So you'll see that there's a let's say a scan document um the the one uh move for your move for you company right and as you can see after a digitized step we're basically using um ocr engines whether it's uh, the microsoft modi or google tesseract or OmniPage, which are all provided uh, free of charge as part of uipad studio um we also have our own doc, uh, document ocr engine but you can also opt to have uh, you know paid OCR from you know Google Cloud or Microsoft uh, Microsoft Cloud. Um, it's so very very flexible that we you can use the OCR engine that best fits the type of documents that you're digitizing. And the next step is really uh, to classify the documents, because um, in some situations, like if you're um, an an insurer, right? your uh, customer will be submitting a stack of documents that say to submit a claim. So there'll be the claim application. They might have some hospital invoice. Uh, they might have some medical reports, uh, discharge um, documents that are provided by the hospital. You need to have the ability to classify where a certain document starts and where, where it ends, right? Because if you're trying to process all of these documents, you need to, let's say, oh, the first two pages are the claims application. The next five pages is the hospital invoice. And let's say the, the last three pages are the hospital uh, discharge, right? So you need to be able to classify these documents. And we're able to do this through keyword-based uh, classification. It just looks for specific keywords in a document. If you see the word, let's say invoice, oh yeah, then that's the hospital invoice. If you see form number 100, oh, that's the claim application uh, document, right? So we, we perform classification as the next step. And if we move forward. Uh, so that's classified. So it's, it's obviously it's optional. If you are just processing just one type of document, you don't need this. Uh, so it's flexible enough. So for you uh, not to have it in your workflow. Um, next step is well, the critical piece. Uh, so uh, one of the critical piece which is the extraction. So, uh, and as you've seen earlier, there are different types of documents that are that may be incoming. So, uh, some types would be uh, semi-structured, some would be uh, uh, structured or fixed format, and some are unstructured. So, that's why uh, during the extraction step, you have the option to combine uh, or have the option to choose uh, the most suitable approach. Uh, be it a, a rule-based or template-based extractor or a model-based extractor or templateless, what we call templateless or 
any type of custom uh, any custom extractors that you may have built and uh, that you can incorporate within the DE framework. So for example, you have a uh, um, uh, ITR 2316 form and, and that is a structured type of document. It stays in fixed format. So you have a fixed format. So you know where always to get the name, the, 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 the uh, tin and all of those details that you want to extract. In that case, you could be able to create templates. So what you can uh, do is create a template out of form extractor or intelligent form extractor where you can define the position or where you want to extract the, the, the different fields that you want for this um, uh, type of document, right? Um, so that's uh, if the document is a fixed format or structured, but what if the, the document type that you're handling will be like um, like the receipts or invoices where even though the fields that you want to extract are the same, the format varies uh, from uh, on different vendors. So different vendors may have different formats. The invoice number may be at the top or the bottom or the middle. Uh, you don't you you uh, uh, you can't afford to create templates for every of those right. So that's why. Uh, Document Signing Framework also has what we call machine learning extractor or model-based extractor, right? And we have pre-trained models for most common types of semi-structured documents like invoices, purchase orders, bill of lading. So you don't have to create templates. So we can just use that as a baseline and just try using it and it will already extract those um, fields that are relevant for those particular types of documents. So no template creation needed. Um, and also you can be able to combine these different extractors uh, at field level. A field level meaning maybe for my invoice, the invoice number, I, I see some patterns for for 80% of my, uh, my invoice format, I see some patterns with the invoice. Maybe the invoice starts with four letters and ends with four numbers. So that's where I can also use maybe the regex based extractor, which is a type, a rule based type of extractor, meaning um, I can create a regular search expression based on that pattern that I'm seeing. And uh, for the remaining, right, for the remaining 20%, um, if the regex based extractor does not provide a good accuracy or confidence score or of extracting the invoice number, then it will fall back to your um, machine learning extractor. So that's how you can combine uh, uh, different types of extractor and make sure your uh, document extraction capability is robust, right? So that's what we call um, hybrid approach. If you see here, we have form extractor and intelligent form extractor. Uh, these are both, these are both um, uh, uh, template-based extractors you can create templates for. Um, uh, and the main difference is intelligent form extractor could be able to uh, cater handwriting or ha handwritten documents. So that's the main difference. And regex based extractor, you don't need to have any familiarity with regex. There's a regex wizard that you can leverage using a uh, regex based extractor. So that's the uh, extraction step. And of course, you also should have a way to engage human uh, in, 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 in the validation steps, right? Because uh, of course, uh, we can't really rely uh, on the, uh, uh, the maybe uh, to have a, a more um, resilient or robust workflow. You should have a way to make sure that the robots um, extraction accuracy, uh, especially if the if it's of initial phase of implementation, the accuracy and confidence score is uh, should make sure that's high, so that those that will be below the confidence level threshold and the extraction and classification step will be passed to a human for validation before um, passing to the downstream steps or before using it uh, uh, on your uh, uh, next steps of the workflow, right? So you have a way to validate using um, validation station and classification uh, validation, validation station that you see here, um, involve a human uh, uh, in the workflow to validate. Didn't even need to suspend the, the, the robot in processing um, uh, the different sections. So the, uh, you'll see later in the demo how 
uh, it is seamlessly being passed to a human while the robot continuously works on the um, the other remaining transactions. So while the human is validating, robot is doing or continuously doing its work. And once the human is done validating, then it will be handed off back seamlessly again to the robot to proceed where it left off. And of course, once that's done, so um, it can uh, the data can be exported or, or leveraged in the downstream systems, maybe just uh, uh, to an Excel spreadsheet for notification or report or uh, to send us an email or maybe uh, entered into SAP or uh, any other CR CRM systems or your legacy systems, um, any uh, core RPA steps uh, you can perform you know, downstream or post-processing steps. So that's essentially uh, how um, DU framework is uh, looks like and, and how it works. And these are just some of the recent um, features that has been added um, in the latest or recent release, right? So you can see for each of the stage, you have the, the different additional features for loading taxonomy. You have enhancements to increase to 300 fields, digitize, uh, text, uh, handwriting, um, also accuracy improvements. Uh, and uh, obviously, I, I won't be able to uh, demonstrate all of this, um, but I think I could be able to show you some of the new out-of-the-box machine learning models that we have available specifically the machine learning model that we have for uh, to extract information from ID, ID cards and passports. So that's this is still in preview though. This is not yet released for generic pub, uh, uh, public availability like 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 our invoices, uh, uh, purchase order invoice uh, uh, receipts. So the IDs and passports machine learning model are still in in preview. Uh, so that we can have your feedback and uh, be for us to be able to retrain it further. And of course, also through our AI center, uh, again, as I mentioned, document understanding is just one of those um, advanced and human-like skills that we can use uh, uh, with AI center offering. Uh, also with, with, with that, uh, with that component, you'll be able to retrain these existing pre-trained models in that same, uh, in that same, uh, uh, infrastructure okay so um yeah these are just uh uh some of the common use cases from from our customers uh that uh has proved uh we've approved that document standing uh how helpful it is for them okay so now we'll go over to the demo let me first show you how it looks like when you're you're, you're creating how is it is when you're developing or creating uh, uh, the uh, DU process, right? So similar to how you create any other um, RPA process within UiPath, or you use also Studio, uh, we just provided uh, an additional capability or sets of activities that you can use to incorporate document understanding into your workflow. So this is a typical uh, uh, document understanding workflow where you have uh, the pre-processing steps, initialization. So in this, I have the loading of taxonomy and then maybe uh, getting the files. And these are just some logging mechanisms that I've enforced as well. So once I run it, uh, you will see what step it is executing. But essentially, the main components here are, are the same, same steps that you saw on the deck, right? Loading taxonomy, digitizing, classifying, validating the classification, so for this demo, I have uh, prompted, uh, 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 I always prompt the classification station for demo purposes, but in an ideal scenario, uh, this in production, this would be something that will be uh, in, in the background or passed to the human in the background so that the bot can continue on processing. Right? Uh, let me go back to step back to the digitize. So again, in the digitize step, you have this digitized document activity that you can where you can plug and play OCR. So if you search for OCR, you have available uh, OCRs here out of the box that you can uh, freely drag and drop if you want to change OCR here. So you can test what works best for your particular uh, documents, right? Uh, so that's for the digitized step. Um, if you go to the next, uh, so classify, you have intelligent keyword classifier are used to classify the documents, right? Because I have a, well, for this demo, I have a, 
four document types that I'll be uh, showing. And that's why there's a need to classify each document before passing to the next step, right? So validating classification to show you how the uh, uh, bot was able to uh, classify it and show it to a human. Of course, uh, after validation, training those classifiers. And um, if there's a document that has multi-page, right? So the classifier will also be able to classify its page or its sections of that file so that it will split it and feed each sections into corresponding extraction. So that's why for each classified section here, I will do the extraction. And since I was able to know what type of document it is, it will be passed accordingly to the correct type of extractor, which you see here, right? Uh, extraction step, I have the machine learning extractor for passport, so ID cards, um, and uh, form extractor uh, for uh, for my uh, forms here, and uh, for my invoices and for my receipts. Uh, right. So um, for the machine learning extractor, obviously, as I mentioned, these are just uh, you don't need to create templates, right? Since these are pre-trained machine learning models that you can readily use or you can retrain if the if you see that the accuracy is not that good. So, uh, yeah, so you don't need to write a template, just point it to your, to your machine learning skill, so your DU skill as an endpoint or machine learning skill. But for the intelligent form extractor or, or the, the form extractor, this is mainly for, um, for uh, structured documents or fixed format. Say I have a reimbursement form, so I create for this reimbursement form. So this is always the same format. So how do I create a template for the for uh, my document? So it's just easy as loading the document within the form extractor, uh, and then just uh, adding um, the 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 area where you wanna extract those, right? And you can add as as much as you can uh, uh, for a particular. Um, uh, uh, field, right? Can add, um, uh, for example, I will add a new, yeah. So this, so now I will have three, making it more, three ways that I can extract the name. So if this fails, we'll just fall back to this. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one of the new features, the anchor base extraction, similar to how uh, computer vision works in maybe uh, uh, in, in, in anchoring to uh, at a field level or labels. So you can also um, uh, enforce it in, in your uh, form extraction mechanism, right? Not only a page level anchor like, like this one. So you can uh, add a field level anchor to make your, your uh, form extraction more robust. So even though there's a slight changes in the form, uh, as long as you anchor in a specific label, um, then uh, then uh, you, you're, you can uh, the the form extractor will be, still be able to extract that field, right? And and yeah, th that's just for for uh, more resiliency and reliability because you really won't expect a form to change that much, right? Since uh, uh, since you considered it a uh, fixed format, so. Um, essentially, it's, it's something that you can easily create a template for. And this is how you can um, easily do that using a form extractor. I just have to save it. Close. So, yeah. So, that's uh, um, extraction. And then you can configure the extractors. So, uh, this is quite a complex uh, use case if, uh, if uh, further developed since in this use case, I'm expecting to uh, process all of this, and that's how flexible really uh, this showing the, how flexible um, a document understanding framework is, and how you can combine different extractors. Say for uh, my example earlier is invoices. Let's say for invoice number, right? Um, my main extraction mechanism will be invoice ML extractor. I don't have to create template like I did with intelligent form extractor because the invoice ML extractor is already pre-trained. So it's templateless, right? So it knows 
where to extract all the fields, uh, invoice number, and all of the, the pertinent information. I just need to feed the document because it's already pre-trained with thousands of invoices. And uh, even though it, it, you feed it with a format that it has not seen the training, given how machine learning works, it can adapt to those documents as well or formats. Um, so let's say, um, going back to my example earlier, I have, uh, uh, I can see patterns on invoice number, right? Um, uh, for uh, maybe the invoice number contains four letters in the first and then four letters, uh, uh, four numbers, uh, last uh, digits, right? So I can also, use uh so so here are my extractors i can also use regex base extractor okay and i can configure expression so let's say for the invoice number and this is how you can figure uh, expressions for um in document understanding uh, in in regex extractor so it's a wizard basically so let's say you have this um ocr digitized text from the from the document and you have here the invoice number since it's since this is a a, a pattern based extractor so or, or regex since this is heavily relies on the text output um uh as compared to the other ones which does not rely on not only on the text but the how it learned right like like the machine learning extractor uh like one two three four five four Okay, let's say that's how uh, invoices are are uh, named, and then some other text here. So I can how you can easily build this. For example, invoice number, find this, then uh, digit between one and eight. And then you add another search term, okay? And then this is what you capture, right? So this is, again, you don't really need familiarity with uh, regex and this is, so now you have the regex extraction mechanism for invoice number and you just need to configure the extractor and then say uh, for invoice number i'll also use this uh, regex base extractor i'll just check it and this is saying that if the regex base extractor is able to extract the invoice number then it doesn't have to use the invoice machine learning extractor if it's not 100 percent confidence then it will use the invoice uh, ml extractor for the invoice number so that's how you uh, do the extraction, okay? And yeah, let me just quickly run this. And of course, the after extraction is valid extraction. Let me just run this quickly. So these are the documents that I'm uh, processing, right? So I have one receipt, one ID, one passport, and one reimbursement form. So. These three uses the machine learning extractor. I didn't create templates, so uh, pre-trained model, just use the pre-trained models. Um, and the other ones, uh, uh, this one is I created template since this is a fixed format. Okay. So let me run this in debug so that you can see uh, what part it's executing, right? It will be much lower, but uh, you will see uh, which part it is uh, executing. Okay, so loading taxonomy. So taxonomy are the document types that I've, oh, actually, yeah. Uh, can you see my screen now? You see it. Yes, yeah, so, so now for the first document, which is the receipt, it's now digitizing, right? So it, it's already loaded the taxonomy. 
and then now passing it to the digital digital step in order to convert that receipt into a, a machine readable image or, or machine readable text that it will pass on to classification to classify what type of document it is and then eventually uh, the extraction so um since it's the bug it's quite oh oh no i stop it sorry <laughs> i'll just run this again i i stopped it earlier because it i got disconnected in the um tin or alan uh we do, we are until 7 30 right yes sir, sir. Sure, thank you so again uh digitize uh, loading taxonomy, then digitize. Uh, feed uh, this is for the the receipt. Uh, I hope I you saw earlier the type of document that you're processing, right? So receipt, ID, passport, reimbursement form. So it, uh, it one by one it will feed to this D framework. Uh, and uh, since I run it in the bug world, this will be much slower. But at least you can see what part it's executing, right? Um, so digitizing, uh, most, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, the, maybe the, one of the longest part, especially if it has multiple pages, uh, since it's trying to, uh, uh, to OCR, uh, since this is an image, it will trying to OCR the, the output, right? And what OCR we're using is Google Cloud OCR. So, okay, now it's classifying after digitizing, it's now classifying the document. And I just prompt this for demo so that I can view the classification station. I have the control to view it now or just skip it. But I uh, want you uh, to show you so how it was able to classify the, the document. So this is classification station, uh, a way for a human to intervene and in case it's not correct in terms of classifying their seats. So it's saying 63%. Uh, it was able to classify a receipt, so it's okay. So imagine you have multiple, um, uh, one file that has multiple pages here. So it also splits the section into multiple different types if uh, it is indeed multiple different types. So I click save, and then now it moves on to the next uh, parts, training the classifier, and now um, each split section in case there are multiple uh, types within one file will be feed into the corresponding extractor. Now the extraction step, since this is a receipt, this will, uh, I will view the validation station. So this is using the machine learning extractor for receipts, which I didn't create template for. So imagine me creating a template for, for, for the receipt. So that's very impossible. So, uh, and let's look at the output of the machine learning extractor. So any receipt that you have, you can try out um, in in exacto in this uh, um, pre-trained model for or for receipt. And if you look at the line items, right? So it is able to extract this. And imagine what you can do with this and uh, in incorporating this capability into your workflow. Maybe you have a uh, 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 every day you have to log your your uh, reimbursements into SAP Concur. So you can be able to automate that, okay? Then manually typing in its line item. So that's the receipt. Now we're going to uh, the next document, which is ID. So the next document is being digitized, okay? And now done digitizing, so it's much relatively much faster for this. And then I'll view the classification just to make sure the classification is correct. And it was able to classify correctly that this is indeed an identification card. If not, I can just easily 
um, uh, correct or uh, input the correct uh, document type. And then once I click save, it will retrain the classifier so that the next time it encounters this a similar type of document, it will uh, correctly handle this or, or correctly identify the type. Okay. Now extraction, I like to view the extraction. So this is how you can see the, the power of a machine learning extractor for uh, this different type of, uh, of document, right? So the ID number which is correct, ID number two. So if not correct, I just I can just easily re uh, change the extracted value to the correct one. And this will be, since this is a machine learning based extractor, it will be uh, uh, retrained back to, to uh, uh, can, can the data output from this validated uh, validation station can be retrained back uh, um, to the model, right? Can be used as a retraining data. Okay, should be correct. Click save, move on with the next document, which is a passport. One of our newer models, which is in preview. So imagine uh, for each document, you have different uh, downstream process. So, uh, so this is how you build an end-to-end -end document, not only the document processing uh, steps, but also the post and pre-processing. The so next step is passport. Our next document is passport. So validating classification. So it's indeed correct, passport, so I don't have to do anything. Just click save. Now it's extracting. And let's look at the output. So yeah. So imagine use cases that you can be able to leverage this uh, KYC maybe uh, for uh, applications, for loan applications. So you can be able to leverage this machine learning model uh, with your KYC process, okay? Just continue on. Then the last document would be the reimbursement form. So this is also to showcase the capability to understand handwriting, right? Um, uh, in the intelligent form extractor uh, activity. So digitizing. And classifying, so let's see what it was able to classify. I'd like to view the classification station. And boom, it was able to classify correctly as reimbursement form. You didn't have to do anything. Uh, but ideally, so if the con uh, in a production or, or, or use uh, scenario or use case, so you just need to check the confidence score. Uh, all other, all all uh, all documents that has confidence score more than 90, so they can be straight through process. So you don't have this validation station doesn't have to pop up. So yeah, this is again this is validation uh, classification station and validation station. So you can create uh, business logic around when this will pop up or show in your workflow. This doesn't have to show every time. Uh, or I mean this doesn't have to be passed to the human every time to validate, but yeah, you, you can uh, uh, set a business logic on when, when this will be passed to a human, right? But for demo purposes, I'm just showing this to you. And train classifiers and then extraction. 
I'll show the validation again. Extraction validation. And then, yeah, this is how the intelligent form extractor was able to extract from this handwriting, handwritten form. Okay. So you see earlier how I, I created the form, how since this is a fixed format, I have uh, specified where to extract specific fields uh, using form extractor. And it was able to read the handwriting correctly. Even the ratios, okay. 102, that's, so that's a, a form extractor with handwriting capability as well, okay? So that's a uh, uh, quick and dirty uh, showcase of how you can leverage document standing to process different types of documents. So this is just a, uh, uh, not really an end-to-end -end use case, but more on the, the how it works, right? That is aligned to the steps I've shown of the DA framework, uh, starting from loading taxonomy, setting the stage, uh, digitizing, classifying, um, uh, validating, extracting, and all of these other steps, okay? Um, now, uh, what I want to show you now is an end-to-end -end use case, right? Uh, let's say you're doing a, a PO, purchase order processing, right? Um, purchase order processing, let's say you have a uh, process where every day you are receiving tons of um, purchase order that you want to process, download the 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 purchase order from the email, right? Um, and uh, feed that document into the document signing framework, then extra and then digitize, extract, and then be able to uh, post that into SAP, the order. So end to end, this will be uh, um, fully automated with human in the loop in case there are orders that needs to be approved or, or further approved before posting into SAP. So that, that human element uh, can be uh, incorporated as well. So let's say we have this purchase order package. So yeah, the, this is a purchase order uh, package, right? And this contains uh, uh, different, um, I mean, one, two, two different purchase order. So, in order for me to to automate this, I would have the I would need to have the capability to identify these different sections of purchase order, right? So, uh, I have to classify this. So, this is the the, the sample uh, use case that I'll be demonstrating, right? That's the input file. Now let's uh, run this. So the, of course, the first uh, uh, step should be, uh, uh, there should be a, a workflow that dispatches the incoming purchase orders into the extraction queue. And then the extraction queue will automatically kick in, do the, do, perform the extraction. Then after the extraction, it will pour, post the invoice into SAP, right? So um, so ideally, this is an unattended process, but for the purposes, I'll just manually kick it in. So it's running. So this patch, what this does, it is monitor this mailbox. Yeah, now it, it kicked in the present. Okay. So now the dispatch document is running. I'll go ahead uh, and simulate an incoming email. So I mark this as unread. And as you can see, as soon as it, uh, uh, an email is received, uh, it will be dispatched into that uh, extraction queue. And then it will automatically um, trigger the order extraction in order to extract this PO package, right? So um, automatically it, 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 it seamlessly hands off the process to the next workflow. Um, and uh, being orchestrated, right? So now performing the extraction, retrieving the document, 
uh, preparing for document extraction. And it will do the same steps I've shown you earlier. So digitizing, um, classifying, now classifying, I'll show what is able to classify. So this is what I mentioned earlier that it was able to split the, the different sections. Hope you can see it now. I'm also monitoring my mobile view here. So now you can see it, right? So um, it was able to split into two sections since it was able to identify that there are two purchase order within this file, so it's correct. If not, I can just easily drag and drop um, the, the pages. And if, let's say, these are not purchase order, I can easily classify it as not, right? Maybe this one is not, should not be a part of the purchase order, so I can just tag it as not classified, so it will not be fed back. Uh, tied to the extractor, okay? So meaning I will have two pages, so each page will be fed into extraction, right? So purchase order one will be fed to uh, uh, PO uh, extractor, machine learning extractor, purchase order two uh, will also be fed into the extractor for processing. As soon as I save, um, it will uh, do the extraction for each purchase order that was identified. So first is the order one. As you can see in the background, it's um, opening Excel, preparing for the extracted data. Uh, yeah, now we can see again my screen. Uh, yeah, so this is how it was able to extract the first purchase order. And uh, for this workflow, I built a logic so that um, if the customer name is this and uh, it is amounting to more than 2,000 um, pesos, then I will have to have it approved first and pass it to a human before posting. So this is the uh, business scenario. So, uh, and this is just to show you what uh, the output looks like. So it doesn't have to be a, a, a part of the process, but just to show you. So as soon as I click save, so you will see here that it will, it detects that this is a high value PO given the parameters I've mentioned, and then it will park it past a human and now it proceeds to the second order, second purchase order. You saw uh, uh, order two. Yeah. And now the order two is automatically, uh, I mean, uh, straight through process. So as you can see, uh, it's now posting the purchase order to uh, into SAP while the purchase order one is parked and and and, and pending approval from a human. Let's uh, and we'll be going back to that later. Let's just finish the purchase order two, which is a straight through being processed into SAP uh, order posting. So this is uh, what the downstream process looks like for this particular uh, PO processing workflow. These are the uh, uh, fields that have been extracted from the purchase order two, right? And Im imagine your, your business workflow. So this is the core traditional RPA so that you're seeing here, the downstream processing. Now that the purchase order two has been completed uh, from, uh, from extraction up to uh, uh, posting, uh, while the purchase order one is uh, still being uh, validated and pending approval since it was passed from extraction to a human because it was detected as a high value PO. So what, how does it look like for a human doing the validation? So we have what we call UiPath Action Center that contains all the actions or tasks that need to be performed by the human, right? Um, in order for in order to uh, to complete the process, right? So this is what we call human in the loop. And now there's no other um, process running aside from this patch, which is continuously monitoring. Uh, the mail inbox in the background, but as I check the unassigned, so I have here the 
uh, uh, custom form I created using Studio or, or uh, UiPath Studio as well, which contains the, uh, the extracted information. So I, I've added the fields. Uh, so you can, uh, building this custom form is also a uh, 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 PC drag and drop uh, form. You can add buttons and add tables and put in your data. Russell, hi, I, Russell, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, just a reminder, we only have 10 minutes left. Sure, then sure. we will proceed with the cut. Sure, sure. Yep, I, I'll just finish this up. Uh, uh, one minute or uh, two minutes. So, yeah, thank you for reminder, Tim. Uh, so, yeah, so as soon as I sign this and click approve, so you will notice that order extraction got resumed automatically where it left off. And it will say now that the SPO is approved and then it will automatically push this to the posting queue for um, the last processing step, which is posting. Now it's uh, doing the posting and it will retrieve the recently approved order. And now instead of the opening SAP by a GUI, so uh, uh, it's now uh, posting it via BAPI. So this is some uh, essentially posting via backend instead of the GUI. So just to showcase another um, capability of integration in SAP. So yeah, that's the end-to-end -end demo, and you've seen how, how how seamless the handoff between human and robot is, uh, from ingestion to extraction, uh, approval, and uh, posting. So that's uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, bearing with my connection in the past few minutes. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I hope you have learned something from this uh, session. So that's essentially. Uh, how document signing is.